I love these moments when everything gets turned upside down. Like back then with Apollo, when Kennedy set the moon as the goal and suddenly engineers conjured up Saturn V and lunar landers in record time to overtake the Soviets. Today it feels similar. Trump is pushing NASA to land on the moon faster. And suddenly the community is buzzing about alternative Artemis architectures that could throw Gateway and Orion overboard. Imagine if we use Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark I for cargo, combine it with SpaceX's Starship for quick landings, or even build a stubby Starship, a short Starship, to speed things up. Today we're breaking it all down. What exactly is Trump demanding? Why could Blue Origin suddenly have the advantage? And what does Ken's clever two-launch solution look like? We draw parallels to Apollo, criticize the dead weight like Gateway and Orion, and show why this could be the game changer for a real moon base. I'm really looking forward to that. After years of being present in my studio, today we're finally taking a closer look at this great fine art print with the Apollo architecture behind me. My name is Sir One and this is Mars Chronicles. Let's take off. Let's dive straight into the current situation. Since Trump's inauguration in January 2025, he has put pressure on NASA. We need to land on the moon faster and not in years, but as soon as possible. This is not empty rhetoric. He has instructed the interim NASA administrator, Sean Duffy, to consider options that favor Blue Origin if they can deliver faster. Duffy has publicly considered that Mark I could step in as a cargo lander, but for crew, we're back to Mark II and that will take years again. Development testing certification. Blue recently announced that Mark I could fly by the end of 2026, but it's uncrewed. To make it crew capable, they'd need to add life support systems, docking ports and abort systems. That sounds like delays, just like Orion's endless upgrades. SpaceX responded promptly. Elon Musk tweeted that they're working on an accelerated architecture. Fans such as Tim Dodd from Everyday Astronaut suggest building a stubby starship. Imagine a shortened starship without the huge tanks for Mars. Optimize for lunar missions, less mass, fewer refueling flights, faster in orbit. That would complement the current human landing system version, which is based on Starship, but is still waiting for Artemis 3 in 2027. Trump wants to move that up, maybe a landing as early as 2026. And that puts the focus on alternatives that shed the expensive slow dead weight. This is exactly where the Lunar Gateway comes into play. That small space station in lunar orbit, which many criticize as a project serving its own purpose. The first module launch on Falcon Heavy is planned for 2027 with costs already over $5.3 billion for the first two modules. And that's with mass overruns and problems with attitude control when large spacecraft dock. Critics like Robert Zubrin call it the lunar orbit toll booth, meaning a toll station or an unnecessary detour that consumes extra fuel. Why? Countries like Starship or Blue Moon can fly directly from Earth orbit to the moon without a rendezvous in the near rectilinear halo orbit. That is, this near rectilinear halo orbit. We'll come back to that later. So, if something were to go wrong, the crews could be stranded for a week both on the surface and on the station. Besides, that's inefficient. More tanker flights for Starship and higher costs. And for what? Microgravity research? We do that better in low Earth orbit. Lunar science? Robotic satellites that can be serviced are cheaper, and going to Mars directly from Earth is more efficient with Starship refueling in Earth orbit, at least as long as there is no significant fuel production on the moon yet. The pro-Gateway faction argues that it's a staging point for deep space missions, a hub for refueling and logistics, and a safe haven for crews. But honestly, unmanned depots in lunar orbit or at the Earth-Moon Lagrange Point 1 could do that more cheaply. The Government Accountability Office report from July 2024 warns of escalation, budget pressure and delays. And with Trump's focus on Mars, Gateway could be the first domino to fall.
international partners like European Space Agency or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency would prefer to build surface infrastructure, habitats, rover power systems. And instead of discarding the built gateway modules, the nominated NASA administrator Jared Isaacman suggests using these modules for the development of nuclear electric propulsion systems. That saves billions and moves us forward faster. Ken Kirtland, the industrial designer and space enthusiast, posted a fascinating idea on X, a moon landing with only two launches. Imagine Blue Moon Mark I. The cargo lander is launched on a Falcon Heavy or a disposable Starship V3 and sent directly to the moon. The advantage of a disposable Starship here would be that you can completely leave out the control surfaces and the heat shield. That would probably save dozens of tons. Orion flies with the space launch system, docks with Blue Moon in lunar orbit, and the crew lands. Ken has calculated it. Falcon Heavy could even perform better than Starship V3 for this launch. He has infographics with Delta V calculations that show how it works out with a 50 meters per second reserve. That's clever. Ken Gateway, less complexity, parallels to Apollo's lunar orbit rendezvous where the command module waited in orbit while the lunar module landed. But wait, this plan has a major flaw. Blue Moon Mark 1 is actually only intended for cargo. For crew, it would need upgrades and that could blow up Trump's timeline. Then we're back to Blue Moon Mark 2 and that's not planned for Artemis 5 before 2030. If things keep going the way they are now, then probably even a few years later. This is where the so-called stubby starship could step in and help out. Tim Dodd suggests equipping it with fewer engines to save weight. That would minimize refueling flights and make a landing in 2026 possible. And Orion, that's the elephant in the room. Over $30 billion burned. And what do we have? A capsule that's almost 27 tons and too heavy and has problems with the heat shield? Problems that are serious and haven't really been fixed? After Artemis 1, they discovered that the heat shield showed wear in places where they didn't expect it. After two and a half years of analysis, they decided not to change the hardware, but to modify the re-entry maneuver. So instead of Orion skipping over the atmosphere to gradually slow down, the capsule now enters directly and doesn't spare the heat shield. That doesn't sound like the solution I would have expected. But you definitely don't want to change anything about the hardware here unless it's absolutely necessary. Because that would quickly cost billions and cause years of delays. Instead, they shift the risk onto the crew, not to mention that the life support systems and environmental controls haven't been tested. On top of that, Orion only provides a delta V of 1,450 meters per second, which is not enough for a low lunar orbit. They deliberately underpowered the capsule here to give the gateway station a reason to exist. Casey Hanma calls it flaming garbage, meaning total nonsense. The development took four times longer and was six times more expensive than Crew Dragon, with mistakes like a missing pressure equalization on the hatch since 2009. NASA keeps pumping money into it. 17 billion just for heat shield fixes alone, while Dragon could fly around the moon for under 500 million per mission. They've already developed an additional propulsion module for Dragon anyway, which can boost the International Space Station. So, there's not much left to do to make it suitable for the moon. Just like with Apollo, where the lunar orbiter rendezvous made things simpler. Take a look at my astrography print. There you can see the command module in orbit and the lunar module on its way to the surface. So could we skip the detour via gateway today? Everything gateway can do can be done much cheaper and more efficiently with a starship. And it doesn't even have to be starship. Even a modified Blue Moon Mark II would be 100 times more efficient. These countries are supposed to stay in lunar orbit anyway, so why not just use it as a station? The Space Review article from January 2025 makes it clear Gateway is redundant, expensive and inefficient. 
With Starship or Blue Moon, we can fly directly to the lunar surface without having to pass through this lunar toll station, as Robert Zubrin calls it. The first two modules already cost $5.3 billion. And that's with mass overruns that endanger the orbit. Instead, we could invest the money in surface infrastructure, habitats, in situ resource utilization for oxygen production from regolith, or even initial tests for lunar fuel. The near rectilinear halo orbit consumes extra fuel. Abort scenarios can take up to 6.5 days. And for science, robotic satellites are cheaper and we do microgravity research better. In low Earth orbit and directly to Mars from Earth orbit with Starship refueling, no detours are necessary. Trump announced a Mars landing in his second inaugural address and that puts on the pressure. Cancel Gateway, save billions, and focus on direct architectures. Experts like Michael Griffin warn about the long abort times, and Gerald Black, a retired aerospace engineer, argues for redirecting the resources away from this dead weight toward real landings, and then Orion. Oh man, that's the real scandal. Over $30 billion burned. And what do we have? A capsule that after 20 years of development still isn't crew ready. Casey Hanmer's blog on the 31st October 2025 calls it by its name and rightly points out the heat shield problems. During Artemis 1, the heat shield material showed over 100 broken studs, deep cracks and entire areas were blown off due to resin evaporating behind the tiles. They changed the formula for better inspections, but that made it worse. Now they want to reduce the heat by entering directly into the atmosphere. But a review board member objected, that's not safe. SpaceX PKX on Dragon works flawlessly and has proven itself on Mars rovers, making Orion seem outdated. Labor intensive with thousands of parts took over four times longer and cost six times more than Dragon. Dragon could do a lunar flyby on the Falcon Heavy for under 500 million, while Orion is a money pit. And the mass is 26.5 tons, including 7 tons of launch abort system. That's heavier than an entire Soyuz module, and then it doesn't even deliver enough Delta V. That's not just expensive, that's a safety risk. Handma even accuses the program management of fraud. Compared to Apollo's command module, which flew in seven years, Orion is a joke and an unaffordable one at that. At the end of the day, all of this shows us. Artemis doesn't have to remain the slow, expensive way we have now. With Trump's pressure and ideas like Ken's two launch plan combined with the stubby Starship, we could land in 2026, faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. Whether it will actually happen that way, however, is still written in the stars. Gateway and Orion are relics from a time when NASA still ruled alone. But today we have SpaceX and Blue Origin who are changing the game. Imagine we throw off the dead weight, just like with Apollo, where they abandoned the Earth orbit rendezvous for the clever lunar orbit rendezvous. And suddenly the moon was within reach. Something similar could happen here. Blue Moon, Mark 1 as the crew mission bridge, Starship as the backbone, and direct transfer cargo landers. Costs decrease as cadence increases. And we're not just planting a flag, we're building a base with the current Artemis architecture. Where we're launching on average less than once every two years, that's not going to work for a permanently crewed base, is it? Of course there are hurdles. Blue has to make Mark 1 crew capable, SpaceX has to implement the stubby concept, and NASA has to navigate the politics. But that's exactly what drives us, just like with Apollo, where technical glitches force them to innovate. Trump wants Mars and the moon is the test. If we replace Gateway Cancel and Orion with Dragon, we save years and billions and catch up with the Chinese who are planning to have a base with their International Lunar Research Station by 2030. And when the Chinese say 2030, I believe them word for word. When the Americans talk about 2030, you have to add a bureaucracy surcharge equivalent to Elon's time compensation constant of N plus 
The optimistic spin, it's doable and it inspires a new generation. Imagine in 2027, we see the first steps at the South Pole with water, ice for fuel, and in 2030, a permanent presence. That's the stuff that multiplanetary dreams are made of. Should NASA cancel Gateway and fully commit to alternatives? Write in the comments and let's discuss. If you enjoyed this journey through alternative Artemis architectures, subscribe to Mars Chronicles and give a thumbs up. A huge thank you goes out to all channel members and Patreon supporters. If you also want early access to our videos, you can find all the information about it below in the video description. My name is Sirwan and this was Mars Chronicles. Thanks for tuning in. Per aspera ad astra.